My life was absolutely spinning out of control. I was seeing a neurologist, I was going to therapy, I was trying to figure out what is going on. I, I didn't realize the weight of what I took on every night during a show. I don't want to sit here and go through life just maintaining. You have to return to me the joy of my salvation. We have to stop being so busy. And there are people out there with not a single friend. I want to be someone who is known as helping eradicate loneliness. So in 2018, we released the record Look Up Child, and it really did change the trajectory of my life. I remember we had just finished touring in Australia when 2020 rolled around. And we had, we had started on the United States leg of the world tour. I think we had something like 72 shows lined up for that. And our show number 10 or 12 it was, everything came to a crashing halt. You think in moments like that, where the bottom drops out, you'll have it a little bit more together than <laughs> what I did. I remember the isolation part wasn't something that was new to me. I had been in isolation in high school, I had an illness, so I was placed on homebound for two years and was experiencing true isolation. A lot of people were isolated together during the pandemic, like the whole world kind of shut down. In high school, only my world shut down. So it was, it was definitely a different experience. But I remember feeling the isolation um, in 2020 and thinking, this is actually one of the best gifts that life could have given me, that God could have given me right now, because it made me have to be still and reconcile with the fact that my life was absolutely spinning out of control. Um, I remember in this isolation being so grateful for it because I, I was able to refine um, the beauty of life again in the simple things like walking to the grocery store and seeing someone smile on the street corner, um, finding time with family again that was just so rich and being able to redeem some of the years that I had been gone for so long. So there was really, really beautiful elements. but. Uh, with my world coming to a crashing halt, it was like whiplash. It wasn't just, my mom often talks about that time. She was telling a friend, like for Lauren, it, it wasn't just that the world shut down. It was also that her life prior to the world shutting down was moving at a speed that wasn't even good for humanity as a whole, right? It's not good for a human being to be going that fast. But not only did were they going that fast, they didn't just come back to regular life. They then went backwards to having to be completely still. And the thing that was the hardest for me during that time was not having any um, correspondence or interaction with people. I remember thinking to myself, like, I, I didn't realize the weight of what I took on every night during a show. Like, I get excited. I, I look for those responses in people's faces. I say, God, where are you meeting this individual? How can I partner with you in bringing love and joy and hope to those people? And when you're doing like 900 Zoom concerts, it doesn't really feel the same because you don't have people on the other side that you can um, extend love to in those moments the way that you would in a live show. So it was, it was definitely difficult. And um, from that experience, I started it dealing with a lot of anxiety, a lot of depression, a lot of panic attacks. And um, I was seeing a neurologist, I was going to therapy, I was trying to figure out what is going on. My life just felt like it was fully flipped upside down. And I feel like that's a relatable story for a lot of people. I feel like a lot of people experienced a very similar, maybe not from like a stage kind of thing or, or having a platform. and but from the sense of life was one way, and now I'm being told a completely different construct that I'm having to give into. And that was really, really tough. And so um, through the, the panic and through the anxiety, I said, God, you have to return to me the joy of my salvation, like the true joy. I don't wanna be, I don't wanna sit here and go through life just maintaining. I wanna go through life with exuberance, with zeal, with passion. I don't want to maintain what I've created, what's been created for me over the past 10 years. And when you allow God to come into those broken places, 
and say, I will, I'll return to you the joy of your salvation. It is like this beautiful lens gets added to your, your eyes and you're able to see through, it's like a glory filter, <laughs> like walking through life and seeing the kingdom versus the things in the natural, like looking at scenarios and saying, oh, I can run into that scenario because I, I know who has me, I know who holds me. And, um, and pursuing even trials and tribulations with joy. I, I found myself really interested in what Paul talked about when he said, consider it joy, my friends, whenever X, Y, and Z happens, whenever troubles come, or how he could be content in all things, whether he was in prison, whether he was in a shipwreck, or whether he was like, you know, king of the world, right? He, he found contentment in all things. And that began to be the prayer on my lips. Like, I want to figure out this contentment. What does this look like to have everything and to have nothing and feel the exact same? Like, I want that wholeness, if you will. And um, so from 2020 and 2021, the chaos of what was there, it was like 2022 was the rebuilding and 2023, I feel like I'm, I'm just, yeah, I'm excited about what God has and the joy that I get to feel every day, even in the midst of difficulty, is unlike anything else in this world. Loneliness is a really interesting um, topic. I remember years ago, somebody asked me, when you leave this earth, what is the legacy that you wanna leave behind? Like you have a platform, you have a name, all the things, what do you wanna leave behind? And I remember it wasn't, oh, I want 900 Grammys. That sounds great. I'm not against it, but the thing that I said is I want to be someone who is known as helping eradicate loneliness. Because I remember before I was ever doing music, um, being in high school, being in junior high, I would look for the lonely person in the room. For whatever reason, God highlighted loneliness to me. It's the feeling that I don't like, probably the most of all feelings. I do not like feeling lonely. Um, and I'll find myself chasing every hour of the night just trying to escape going to sleep because I don't want to feel lonely. And that is a, that's a real thing for a lot of people and then some. And there are people out there with not a single friend. Like, and that's a problem. For those who do have friends, that's a problem. We need to be more active in more people's lives. All of that to say, um, there was a mandate in the beginning of time that said, love your neighbor as yourself. Like, God wrote it in, in the commandments, right? He wants us to love others. And one of the things that we can do in regards to loneliness is love our neighbor. So when you go to the grocery store and you're sitting there checking out, look at the cashier and say, how's your day? What's going on? How, how can I put a smile on your face today? When you're walking on the sidewalk and you pass someone, you can say, hey, I hope you're having a great day or hello. And you just never know like what uh, a countenance of kindness can offer someone. The reality is if we're living by those commandments to love your neighbor as yourself, to love others, we have to stop being so busy. We have to be able to look at the person next to us and see their scenario, see what they're going through and love them as we would love ourselves. It wasn't the commandment to make this much money the commandment to be this successful, the commandment to have this many things on your to-do list that get crossed off. It was the commandment to love others. And so whenever we look at society, the stillness is what brings the fruit. And so, um, yeah, I would say, how can music help? How can we as Christians help solve this problem of loneliness? I would say it's to be present and to see others in their situation, not in the situation you want them to be in, but actually in their situation. How can you go and tend to their needs right then in that moment? Um, whether it's just someone on the side of the road, like you can talk to homeless people, it's okay. <laughs> you know, you can say hello to a homeless person and then keep going on your day. But um, I find myself really seeing Jesus the most clear in those moments and uh, and I delight in those moments. It's what like actually you'll find you thought you were going to help them or give them a smile and your heart will light up in a way that you haven't felt in years. Um, and that's what that's what my journey has been over the past couple of years, talking to people again. I think a lot of times in media we can read where 
uh, this headline is saying this, this headline saying this, this headline saying this, and it makes you want to not engage with humanity. It makes you kind of like, I gotta keep this protection mechanism up at all times, or else what if the bottom drops out and I'm caught on camera, <laughs> you know, or whatever. I think those headlines kind of um, naturally, psychologically dictate that we would be more of a, a reserved people. But that's not, that isn't actually what Jesus would want. He would want us to run into the world and say, oh, let me show you kindness. Let me show you love. Let me show you hope. And with that, it comes with interacting with the people around us. How can music help? Let's get back to that. Music can help because there's something really powerful about music that it opens up the doors to the soul. It opens up the doors to the spirit. It's the universal language. God can come through the airwaves and make you feel things that you haven't felt in years. He can make you feel passion. He can make you feel uh, love. He can make, make you feel joy. He can make you feel sorrow. He can make you feel grief. There's so many things that can come through the medium of music. And um, music has this way of interacting and intersecting our stories right when we need it. I've heard so many people uh, say that they were going to end their life and then a song came right at that moment and it changed everything for them. It gave them a new fresh perspective, a fresh way of hope. And um, I think that's the power of God interacting with our stories in a song. And there's something about, about music that allows those walls that we've protected ourselves with to just come down ever so slightly and for God to, to come and meet with us. And that's the power of music. It's, it's a really beautiful thing. The thing that's really special about having community uh, regarding music, regarding radio stations, regarding music being on the radio, these stories, these lyrics um, in particular, finding its way into your car stereo, your house stereo. Like, there's something about that that's really powerful. Um, and to me, I have seen incredible fruit. I've had people write stories that say, hey, I was going through this at this time. I was experiencing cancer at this time and I heard this song on the radio and it became the song that I listened to every time I was doing chemotherapy. Um, I had to go through countless surgeries and this was the song that I played in the OR. Um, I lost a loved one and at that time, as they were taking their final breath, we played this song. Um, I was going through divorce and I was completely alone and I, I remember uh, this song met me right when I needed it. Countless stories, people who went to end their life. Um, I had this one lady tell me, and this is really intense, but uh, this was one story that just stuck with me so profoundly. She said that uh, she had an abortion 10 years prior to um, this song. And she said she couldn't lift her head off the pillow. like. The, the grief, she thought she was doing the right thing, and then it ended up being just a really tragic situation. Um, and she said for years and years she dealt with shame, and she didn't know how to like interact with the world, how, how to get up again after that. And um, she said she heard how can it be for the first time. And it was the first time in 10 years that she was like, okay, I can face the day. and when you see that music can be on a radio station right when someone needs it, that a song can come right when someone needs it and redefine their worth, redefine um, the way God sees them, there's something that, that only music can do with that, right? And so I think a lot of times there's this bonding agent that happens too with music. So for me, I get the privilege of being on stage and seeing it happen in front of my eyes, but people will bond over a song. I remember this uh, lady telling me this story of coming to one of the concerts alone and she there was this like fan forum or something of people telling their stories of going to a concert and she mentioned that she was gonna go by herself. Well, this other lady was going by herself. And she said, well, I'm going, we should actually just go, let's meet up and go together. So they met outside of the uh, show and they came to the show together. They became best friends from that scenario and then moved to the same town so that they had friendship. This goes back to talking about loneliness. Like people find community through music. People find 
um, love and compassion and a sense of purpose with music that is really, really powerful. Um, and I, I got to witness that with my own eyes, two individual stories that might have experienced loneliness and music brought friendship. So I say all of that to say, I think the power of music to bring community um, through radio stations is a really beautiful thing that we have in the world. Thanks for watching. Oh, I hope you loved it. I trust you did. And if you did, check out that one next. That one right there. I, I really think you're going to like that one. You can trust me. You can trust me. I'm in Christian radio. It's, it's that one right there. And then uh, make sure to subscribe. Just click that little button. We'd love to stay in touch with you right there. <laughs>